Do you ever feel like there's too many games to play? Do you ever feel like you have kind of like a big struggle every time you try to decide to play a new game? This is probably because things have changed quite a bit since the old days. There is so much choice now that is good for the consumer, but it could also be extremely overwhelming. Yes, you can say this is something of like what people use as like first world problem, but with the amount of services and stuff offered these days uh, from Xbox Game Pass and everything that gives you to if you have a PlayStation Plus membership, the free games that that gives you, Epic Game Store doles out free games all the time, Steam, you're getting games on sale all the time, you're always building up your backlog. There's a million different examples for how your games could be piling up without you even spending too much extra money and it can get overwhelming. Now I posed this problem to a lot of you guys on social media and there was some good conversation and I realized like, oh, it wasn't just me. And I've kind of wanted to tackle this topic for a while, but I've kind of had reservations because I thought it was just me. And I was like, get over yourself, you big baby. You can't decide what video game to play. It's also me kind of being fed up with it in the sense that it started with uh, other stuff like streaming, uh, like Netflix and blah, 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 all those services. If you have one of those, maybe even two of those, I, I very often have found myself just scrolling going, what do I watch? Oh, what the fuck am I gonna watch? Full full well going full well going into this, wanting to watch something, not knowing what exactly, but you know, whether you're there by yourself or you're there with your significant other or your imaginary friend, I'm uh, whatever, uh you often find yourself just scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. What do you wanna watch? What do you wanna watch? I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. And that's been me for years, and now with the way game services are being offered, it feels like it's the same thing, and I, I don't like seeing it go down that road. I do think it's a specific issue though, because it's not not something that every player experience. I talk to some people who, who don't have that problem at all. You might only like a couple of genres of games. You might like a specific category of games. That's what you play. You love them. You play them endlessly. Good. Good for you. Uh, there are some people who like to play a couple of different genres like me or maybe you out there who uh, will try something or they like JRPGs. They like RPGs. They like action and adventure, whatever. I've met a lot of people like that. And with more and more games releasing, thankfully it's a little quiet right now, but with more and more games releasing, it, it there's a lot. I think the thing for me is that there have actually now been more good games releasing than bad games. And I don't mean like you don't like a game and you call it trash. I mean like a game that is like not a mess, maybe not for you or your personal taste, but a game that is good, not broken, interesting to play uh, that is out there. There's more games like that out there than there isn't. Now, if you only pay attention to AAA games, you're gonna say, no, oh, Jake, all games are releasing broken. There are so many other games out there, dude, that are coming out all the time, that are great, that don't get enough attention. But there is a question in terms of quality of releases of things being dumped on th to these Netflix of games types of experiences, like PlayStation Now, uh, Game Pass, anything, uh, GeForce Now, whatever, wherever you're playing your things. The question is, is more better? And interestingly enough, I, I, I tried to dive into researching some of this stuff I've always called it uh, choice paralysis. That's what it's always felt like, being paralyzed by choice. And by looking into it, it is actually a thing. Usually it's referred to as analysis paralysis. I didn't really know any of this. And like, interestingly enough, there's like not a shit ton of definitive studies or, or research out there, but there is a couple of things that I've, I've seen that just make me at least go, oh, okay, that's a thing. <laughs> So the main term analysis paralysis is defined as, um, let me let me get out my big, I'm, I'm back on the folding phone, oh God. Analysis paralysis or paralysis by analysis, this is very like Grandmaster Flash, uh, describes an individual or group process when overanalyzing or overthinking a situation can cause forward motion or decision making to become paralyzed, meaning that no solution or cause of action is decided upon. A situation may be deemed too complicated and a decision is never made due to the fear that a potentially larger problem may arise. A person may desire a perfect solution, but may fear making a decision that could result in error while on the way to a better solution. Uh, there's also the concern of uh, the worry of diminishing Turns. The more that you worry about making a decision, the crappier decision you'll make. So the big thing with this concept uh, actually was a, was a study conducted surrounding jams. Essentially, this jam company put out tables of jam choices 
and there were two and they would rotate their offering it would either be six jars of different varieties of jams or like 24. so i'm reading the paraphrase description from the new york times i'll read it in the description below but essentially what whether it was a big offering or a small offering most people choose to test uh, to taste test an average of two jams but 60 percent of customers were drawn to the large assortment while only 40 percent stopped by the smaller offering. But with that, interestingly, 30% of the people who had sampled from the smaller choices decided to buy something, while only 3% of the people confronted with like 24 jams bought one. So it kind of encourages the hypothesis that presence of choice might be appealing as a theory, but in reality, people might find more and more choice to actually be debilitating. This is the main one that a lot of articles have went to, but there have been more since then uh, with different things like food or, or, or different types of choices, people. But what I think is interesting is that other scientists have pointed out that it's not necessarily saying that more choices are bad, it's really how it's presented, what's presented, and the expertise given or the expertise you have about it all. So what I think is interesting from the gaming perspective, at least for, for my gamer brain and maybe for yours, is that with these games, like, yeah, so you're looking at a, a bunch of Netflix stuff. Maybe you don't like horror movies or you really don't like, like, whatever. There's probably a good portion of things that you're never going to watch on Netflix. But I think for players of video games, it might be a little harder because I feel like we all, like subconsciously aspire to play everything. We want to see everything. We want to tr at least try every everything. Uh, we want to just experience every new game experience. And I think the problem is, is that these offerings, whether it's you having a massive backlog on Steam or, or whatever, the intention isn't for, by them, isn't for you to play all of it. But for big enthusiasts like us, like how can we not want to or aspire to? I feel like it's like in the nature of gaming, like it's in our nature or like when you were younger and you could only get your hands on like one game and you played that game obsessively for six months, maybe even a year until you were able to get another one and you knew the ins and outs of that game and you were so excited about the next game and it was either going to be the best thing ever or it was gonna be terrible and you learned to live with it and you still play the hell out of it. And the problem is, I think whether you like it or not, maybe if you're an old school gamer or not, uh, it's gonna get worse. There's going to be more games on offer, more decisions. Um, I think the concern a lot of people brought up with me in the Twitter conversation was quality in terms of like, hey, what if they're just dumping a bunch of shitty games onto these streaming services? I think so far, it's been pretty good. Like I said earlier, I think statistically, there are more games out there that are mechanically and, and production wise good than not. It just might not be something that you're into, but over time, they're gonna keep adding things, and I know they take some away, but they're gonna keep adding things to these services that there's going to be more for you. And th th then there's the whole other debate or question like with these services, like are you going to be able to get through an entire game before they change it? Like say The Witcher 3 on Game Pass, you're slowly chewing through it hour by hour for hundreds of hours and then it's taken off the server. Like there's those questions too. But I think in terms of like the future and this increasing, uh, two takeaways maybe. And number one, from what I've read and from what I've seen and suggesting, not really with games, but with other choices, uh, the, the idea, the theory, theory uh, to limiting yourself to two or three choices and, and being hardline about that. You see something, you say, okay, maybe that. You see another thing as you're scrolling, you say, okay, maybe that. And you see three or two of those and you say, okay, I am deciding between these two or three. That can at least make it a little bit easier. I've been doing that lately when I'm scrolling through Netflix or scrolling through Hulu or whatever. So part of the solution is you. It's like a little self-therapy, a little uh, consumer exercise, exercise how you consume things. Uh, but on the other end, I think the other thing, and it's suggested by a lot of these little studies, is um, consumer education. I think the people that offer, especially more, not like you just having a bunch of games on your Steam backlog, but more of these like Game Pass type subscription services, the more that they offer these choices, I think the better they have to be curated, uh, the more you have to be informed about them. It seems like this is a new thing and the companies are very much learning as they go. And I think they're doing a decent job. But more and more, I think we're gonna have to have more categorization, more uh, things being tailored specifically to you, whether that's through smart algorithms or not, I, ugh, I don't know. But just overall, more information because I mean you have you have the good idiots like us you have youtubers like you can look up and hear about a game and and that's good you can be informed but like when you're actually just staring at a marketplace it's different there's reviews there's stuff but how it's presented to you I think they could rethink I almost think we might get to a point where there's a demand for the opposite this is I'm going like far in the future now because uh, people could do this now on their own but like 
down the line, people might actually look for services that offer more smaller curated choices of games. You know, does that make sense? Kind of like, I don't know, like maybe like other vices or something like say a cigar lounge where it's like, yeah, you can walk into this big store where they sell a bunch of cigars or you can go in the back where the rich people hang out and there's only like 20 cigars to choose from, but they're all really good. I Like something like that, I could see a game service or a mailing list or even like a content creator just outlining and recommending games. Uh, people will learn to lean towards more smaller curated groups of games. Like, hey, you're like this, you might like this. Now I'm getting really abstract though, I'm really losing this, but I think that's the ultimate thing here is going to be a battle with yourself, figuring out how to decide if you do struggle with this problem, maybe do a little self-therapy. And number two, hopefully the the categorization and, and the way these things are offered and the way we're educated or informed about these choices only improves at the same time. But this is part of the hell of the all digital future. I don't know, more questions like this, more what ifs. And I look into choice paralysis and analysis paralysis. I'm gonna link it all in the description because uh, it is pretty interesting stuff. And especially considering it's not like the biggest thing in the world, it's still fun. So I, that's kind of why I wanted to make this video. So I definitely want to know what you guys think. I think it's going to be split. I think some of you are going to be like, yeah, yeah, that is a thing. And I think some of you are going to be like, what are you talking about? Shut up with your first world problems. And I get it completely. But I think this is a fun topic. It's not really one for like the algorithm or anything. I just kind of wanted to jump into it because it's something I felt strongly about for a while. So I do want to say, I've been saying this a lot, but if you, if you like what I'm trying to do here, I'm just talking about things I love. Click the like button. That's the only thing you gotta do to help me out and I would really appreciate that. Uh, but if you are new also, uh, if you subscribe and hit the notification bell, I don't spam you. I put out a video once or twice a week. So thank you for watching. I'm gonna get back to work. Good luck playing whatever you're playing right now. I'm Jake Baldino. Thanks for watching. Subscribe because video games.